In this lesson, we'll determine area using polar coordinates. We are asked to determine the area of the inner loop of r equals one plus two cosine theta, which is graphed here. The area of the inner loop is this area here. Using polar coordinates, area is equal to one half times integral from alpha to beta of the square of f of theta, d theta, where f of theta is the same as r. So in our case, we will have the area A is equal to one half times the integral. We'll work on determining the limits of integration in a moment. F of theta or r is one plus two cosine theta, which means the integrand function is the square of one plus two cosine theta, d theta. And now let's work on determining the limits of integration that will trace out the inner loop. Remember, it's helpful to graph the polar equation on the rectangular coordinate system as shown here, where along the horizontal axis we have theta, along the vertical axis we have r. Notice at this point, r is three and theta is zero radians, which corresponds to this point on the polar curve. And then notice as theta increases, the radius decreases until at this point where the radius is zero and the angle theta is two-thirds pi radians. So as theta increases, the curve is traced out in this direction. This is the orientation of the curve. And at two-thirds pi radians, we are back at the pole, which is this point here. Now looking at the piece of the curve below the horizontal axis, this is the piece of the curve that traces out the inner loop. Notice how r is negative over the interval from two-thirds pi radians to four-thirds pi radians, which means the point is plotted in the opposite direction. So for example, this point here, r is negative one and theta is pi radians. So the terminal side of pi radians is to the left here, but because r is negative one, we plot the point one unit in the opposite direction, which is here. So the orientation continues in this direction, tracing out the inner loop. And notice at four-thirds pi radians, we are back at the pole. So we have an option here. We can integrate from two-thirds pi radians to four-thirds pi radians, which traces out the entire loop, or we could integrate from two-thirds pi radians to pi radians, and then double the area, because that interval traces out half of the loop. And let's go ahead and do that. We'll integrate from two-thirds pi radians, or two pi divided by three radians, to pi radians and then double the area, so we multiply by two. Before we evaluate this, let's check the limits of integration in degrees on the T84. For review, if we press mode, notice how I'm in degree mode and polar mode. If we press window, theta goes from zero to 360 degrees by increments of 2.5 degrees, and I'm going to use this window here. If we press y equals, I've already entered the polar equation, and now we press graph. And now if we press trace, we can verify the limits of integration. Notice right now, theta is zero degrees, so we're at this point here. If we press the right arrow, theta will increase by 2.5 degrees. Notice back at the pole, the angle theta is 120 degrees or two-thirds pi radians. So if we continue from 120 degrees to 180 degrees, we trace out half of the inner loop. This is why we integrated from two-thirds pi radians to pi radians and then double the area. To trace out the entire loop, Notice how it takes the interval from 120 degrees to 240 degrees, which again is two-thirds pi radians to four-thirds pi radians. And now let's find the area. Two times one-half is equal to one, giving us the integral from two-thirds pi radians to pi radians. And now we need to square one plus two cosine theta, which will give us one plus four cosine theta plus four cosine squared theta. And now we'll use a power reducing formula for cosine squared theta, where cosine squared theta is equal to the quantity one plus cosine two theta divided by two. 
Performing the substitution gives us the integral from two-thirds pi to pi radians of one plus four cosine theta plus four times the quantity one plus cosine two theta divided by two d theta. Simplifying, we have the integral from two-thirds pi radians to pi radians. Looking at this product here, notice how the four and two simplify. There's one, two, and two, and two, twos, and four. So the integrand function simplifies to one, and then when we distribute two here, we have two, so one plus two is three, and we have plus four cosine theta. Distributing the two again, we have two cosine two theta. So plus two cosine two theta. And now let's evaluate this on the next slide. Find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of three with respect to theta is three theta. Plus the antiderivative of four cosine theta is four sine theta. Now to integrate two cosine two theta, we need to perform u substitution, where u is equal to two theta, du is equal to two d theta. Dividing both sides by two, we have one half du equals d theta. Showing the u substitution here, we have the integral of two times d theta is one half du, and cosine two theta is cosine u. So we just have the integral of cosine u, which is equal to sine u, which in terms of theta is sine two theta. And now I need to find big F of b minus big F of a. When theta is equal to pi, we have three pi plus four sine pi plus sine two pi. And when theta is equal to two-thirds pi, we have three times two-thirds pi plus four sine two-thirds pi plus sine two times two-thirds pi. And now simplifying, sine pi and sine two pi are both equal to zero, so here we just have three pi minus the quantity three times two-thirds pi. The threes simplify to one, leaving us with two pi. And then we have plus four sine two-thirds pi. To evaluate sine two-thirds pi, let's use a reference triangle. Two-thirds pi is equal to 120 degrees, so the terminal side is in the second quadrant here where the reference angle is 60 degrees, and therefore the short leg is one, the hypotenuse is two, and the long leg is square root three. But because we're in the second quadrant where x is negative, this leg is negative one. Using the reference triangle sine two-thirds pi radians is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is square root three divided by two, giving us four times square root three divided by two, and then we have plus sine four-thirds pi, which is equal to 240 degrees. Terminal side is in the third quadrant with a 60 degree reference angle. So again, we have one, two, square root three. Both x and y are negative in the third quadrant. So this is negative one and this is negative square root three. The sine of four-thirds pi radians is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is negative square root three divided by two, giving us minus square root three divided by two. Simplifying, we have three pi and then minus two pi. Here the four and the two simplify. There's one, two, and two, and two twos and four. This gives us minus two square root three. And then we have minus negative square root three divided by two, which gives us plus square root three divided by two. And now let's go ahead and combine like terms. Three pi minus two pi is pi. 
Let's write negative two square root three as a fraction with the denominator of one. These are like terms. The common denominator is two, so multiply the numerator denominator by two. So here we have negative four square root three. So this gives us minus four square root three divided by two plus square root three divided by two if we want plus one square root three divided by two, which gives us pi minus three square root three divided by two. So this is the exact area of the inner loop. But we could also write this as pi over one minus three square root three divided by two, obtaining a common denominator. We could also write the exact area as two pi minus three square root three all over two. I hope you found this helpful.